now that we know how to um, interpret the first and second derivative, we actually have quite a few tools for drawing the graph of a function. And the book um, combines these into a big grand strategy for um, graphing a function. So um, it's basically use everything you know about functions so far to do it. So things that you already knew about, like finding the domain and symmetries, um, but then also finding the first and second derivative and looking for critical points. So and figuring out what happens at each critical point. Do you have a relative max or a relative min or some kind of saddle? Um, using the first derivative to figure out where the, where the curve is increasing and decreasing. Looking for points of inflection where you go from concave up to concave down or vice versa. And then identifying asymptotes. That's kind of a skill from before. Um, you put all those points on a graph with maybe some intercepts and some other things and sketch the curve. So let's use this strategy to graph some function. We've got this example, y is equal to x times the natural log of x squared. So we think about the domain of this function. In order to take the natural log of a number, it has to be positive. So we know that x has got to be greater than 0, which means we're not going to see any graph over to the left of the y-axis. That means that there can't be um, any y-axis symmetry and no origin symmetry. Kind of a, a graph that only exists on one side of the, the origin, so it won't be symmetric. OK, so that was, that was pretty quick. Let's see what we can learn from calculus. We look at the derivative here, y prime. is a product of two functions. So we'll take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first, which is x times the derivative of the second. Now we have a function to a power, so the power comes down. We get the function to one power less, and then we get the derivative of that inside function. And I can see that the x's are going to cancel. And we have a common ln x, so I could factor it out. We have ln x times ln x plus 2. OK, so there's our first derivative. And um, since we already know x is going to be greater than 0, the only kind of critical points we're going to have where x is greater than 0 are if the derivative is is 0 because it's the function the derivative is going to be defined as long as x is positive. So if the product of these two things is 0 that means either the natural log of x is 0 or the natural log of x is negative 2. So let's see this says 0 is the exponent you put on e to get x. So 0 is the exponent you put on e to get x. x is e to the 0 or 1. This one says negative 2 is the exponent you put on e to get x. So x is e to the negative 2, or if you like, 1 over e squared. So these are our two critical points. So they're places where y prime is 0. So they're going to give us little uh, flat spots in the graph. Let's see, level spots in the graph anyway. OK, the second derivative. To do the second derivative, um, maybe I'll just do it from um, this first derivative. The derivative of ln x squared is 2 ln x, right? the power comes down, you get the function 1 power less times the derivative of what's inside. And then the derivative of these x's canceled, so that was the derivative of 2 ln x, which would be 2 over x. We can factor out that common 2 over x, and we have ln x, that's interesting, ln, ln x plus 1. There's our second derivative. OK, so we can see we're going to get um, the second derivative is going to change sign at, um, well, let's see, when will that change sign? It'll change sign when ln x is equal to negative 1. And that says that negative 1 is the exponent you put on e to get x. Ah, so the second derivative is going to change sign at 1 over e. Um, if you go to the left of 1 over e, um, you're going to see that this is more negative, and so you get uh, that the second derivative is less than 0. After 1 over e, the second derivative is going to be greater than 0. OK, let's see. We've got quite a bit of information. Let's see if we can put that to good use in drawing the graph. Let's start maybe with our critical points. I've got this one critical point um, at 1. So there's a critical point here at 1, and there's another critical point at 1 over e squared. So, or e to the negative 2, if you like. So we've got our two critical points there. Now, if I plug 1 into the original function, the natural log of 1 is 0. 
So we have 0 squared times 1, which is going to be 0. So this is actually a point on the graph. And we know that um, 1 over e is here. And since 1 is to the right of that, the graph is concave up. So we must have, right, because to the, to the right of 1 over e, the second derivative is positive. So we must have a little min here in the function. Um, and we could look at our critical point at 1 over e squared. There, since 1 over e squared is to the left of 1 over e, the second derivative is negative. So we know we've got a function that opens down like this. OK, now there's, we, it's concave um, down over here and concave up over there. And the inflection point where it bends or it changes from being bent bent downward like a bowl down to being bent like a bowl up is right there. So I'm going to fill those in so that it inflects right there. Huh? Now as we come back from this bowl, since this is our critical point, there's no chance, the derivative must be negative here. There's no chance for it to change. So the function is going to come down. But look at the function. If x is greater than 0, um, the natural log of x, uh, when you square that, is going to be positive. And x is greater than 0, so that's going to be positive. The function is always positive. So I know that it's going down as we come back, but I'm not sure how far down. Now, the function is not even defined at 0, so we can't plug in 0 and see what we get to. And finding this limit is actually kind of tough, because ln x is going to negative infinity as x goes to 0. So we have like negative infinity squared. That's going to be really big. Um, but then x is going to 0, so that's going to be really small. And a small number times a big number, it's hard to predict what's going to happen, although we do know it's coming down somewhere. It turns out that uh, later on we'll learn how to find that limit, and that limit's going to be 0. So we'll use derivatives to do that too. So we've got this picture. And out on out here, the um, the first derivative just keeps getting bigger and bigger because ln x gets bigger and bigger as x gets bigger and bigger. And so we have a number that's getting bigger and bigger times a number that's getting bigger and bigger. It's going to get bigger and bigger. So the graph's going to look something like this. So that was pretty good. We got quite a bit of information about the graph just by um, using techniques, looking at the first derivative and second derivative mostly told us what the graph looked like. Now just for fun, it's always uh, kind of neat to check your work if you ha if you want to get like a graphing utility to do that. Um, and I went ahead and graphed it here, and uh, my picture wasn't perfectly to scale, but I did get, did capture the major features of this graph. It's a little too big for us to see, but yeah, we got kind of the major features. We got the, the uh, the hump here and then the minimum there at one. Um, and so it did a pretty good job.